Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. It's so great to have you with us. You know, Jeff, some Christmases, some holidays, we go all out and do all kinds of fancy things. We've done a musical. Yes, you have. We've done all kinds of fun Christmassy things. This year, 2020, we decided to take a different approach. As yes. we wrap up the year here on Category 5 TV, it's about just taking a break sitting down just together as kind of our Cat5 family and hanging out and just having a nice time together uh, and, and kind of reminiscing a little bit. And I was saying before the show here, I've got my phone. I'm not being antisocial, I promise you. I'm being very social because I'm watching our Discord, I'm watching yes. our IRC chat server, and encouraging our viewers to get in there while we're live, while we're uh, recording the show. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to, to say hello, to tell us a little bit about, uh, maybe reminisce with us, tell us some of the things that you've enjoyed with Category 5 this year, and, uh, and, and hey, interact with us. We don't get to interact it's with the viewers as much as we used to. It is true. And I miss that. I really do. Um, and that's part of the evolution of a program such as ours, is that we don't always get to sit down and just have a one-on-one -on -one with our, our Discord and our, our viewers. It's true. We've done Zoom meetings, and we have yep. the community coffee break, which happens uh, every Sunday, and BP9 has been great to take that over for me. Yes, it's been huge. Um, yeah, and so that continues, and it's a great opportunity for you to sit down with, uh, with our community. Um, now, the whole studio is shutting down for the, for the rest of the year, like the end of December. Makes sense. And coming back in January. And so it's, it's a really, really neat time uh, for us. We've never, ever done that before. I know. I mean, it, we've been through a, a heck of a year. It, and it really has been a year. I mean, like, I think about when this year started and a new studio was not on the mindset, like, COVID was not on the mindset. It was no. just like, hey, yeah. we're really excited about, you know, the season and the things that are coming. Mm -hmm. And then March hit and it just kind of <laughs> went. <laughs> and uh, wow. here we are. We're, I mean, we're in Studio E. I uh, love the studio. I love all the changes, the things that are happening. Really excited about 2021 and what mm -hmm. it's going to bring for Cat5. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be good to just kind of wrap up on a positive note. I know it's been a tough year for a ton of people, but we've mm -hmm. tried to, you know, keep fa Cat5 as consistent as possible and as fun and, you know, social as possible. And so, yeah, if you are watching live, get in the Discord. Not only have we tried to keep it going and, and keep the show um consistent as you say but also to try to find our new self yes, that's right? right because our show has gone through such a time of transition yeah um so as jeff mentioned at the start of this year 2020 we were gearing up for all the features that we had planned we were getting everything set um we had just finally purchased a server rack yep for our old studio d because uh you remember jeff um we had that big uh, 3U Dell R510 <laughs> server Massive. sitting on a desk. Yep. We didn't have a rack for that. So we just got a server rack. We just got a new isolated audio console. Mm -hmm. It's a Tascam 24 channel console, which is a big upgrade for us. And, and we were finally ready to do that. And then um, we lost our studio. Yeah. Because the landlord yeah. decided that he was hoping to reuse the space for something else. Yep. But just after giving us that news, so we were just humming and hawing and trying to figure out, okay, well, where does this leave us as a show? That's when the pandemic started. Yes. So yep. we moved. <laughs> and we lost Sasha. And we lost Sasha. I mean, she's, she's still with us. She's still part of our community and part of our, our crew. Um, so for those of you who wonder, you know, what, what has happened with Sasha, um, she is still very much a part of this family and, and our staff, but life has completely shifted for her as That's well. Right, so yeah. she's had to move across the country. Yep. She does have a dream, and we support that dream uh, of uh, renovating um, her attic space into a pseudo kind of remote studio. Which would be so cool. And it would be really cool so that she'd be able to remote in and come on and be a part of our show once again in, in some fashion. It's not going to yeah. be like it was back in Studio D when she was there in person. But, but we're still looking at ways to have her here. And some people have said, well, why haven't you had her here? 
why hasn't she been on on a Wednesday night when you guys are live and you could have brought her on by Zoom or something like that? And as I say, life has happened for her too. That's right. So having moved across the country, she got a job and she is working like mad. And Very much so. And she works Wednesday nights. Yes. And also the time change. So and the time it's, change. It's which much later. Try to get Sasha to, to explain to us what time it is and, and what time <laughs> she's going to be here. It's just not it was, happening. That was a great episode. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I like when Sasha would he, was here for Studio D, like the show would end and she's like, I'm going home, I got to go to bed. Because yeah, she always had, she had to work early the mornings. next morning. Yeah. And so, I mean, to then ask her to do Cat 5 when she's in a later time zone and it's going to, you know, be an even later night for her. I mean, she'd be going till like, what, 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock maybe. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's like, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, Noman5 wants to know if this is our opportunity to see Robbie dance. And it's not yet. That's a funny story, too, because now... I don't know the story. Okay, well, we, we were approaching... We were at 24,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, Linux Tech oh, Show. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I kind of, uh, off the cuff, jokingly said, Hey, if we hit 25,000, I'll, I'll, I'll do a dance for you. And then all of a sudden, we hit 25,000. Oh. And I got called out on it. And it's like, you need to dance now. So I had, I, I got a choreographer to put together a dance for us. Yeah. And then the, the city went to lockdown. Right. Yes. And so that is still happening, apparently. That is something that I'm planning to do. But like so many things with lockdown kind of, you know, we're locked down. Okay, now we're not locked down. We've... Even been even I guess Sunday was it that I messaged you and said yeah. I don't know if we're going to be able to sit down in the studio because yeah, Monday they upgraded us to red. Monday our city was moved to red zone they call it so yep. we weren't even sure if we were going to be in lockdown by Wednesday but here we are we're not in lockdown yet again but it yep. keeps kind of going that ebb and flow and and we do need to keep everyone safe that's Absolutely. very very important so is the dance happening yes. Well, and but the other thing that's got to happen yeah. is the simulated labor. That's happening, too. So well, I had somebody ask me about that this Saturday. They're like, hey, what do you do with that labor thing? I, I know. Like, How do you know about that? They're like, people talk, man. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Your wife is spreading the word. Yeah. So that with that, so and, and a lot of the Kickstarter perks as well, um, these are all things that are, that have, because of the pandemic, had to just be put on pause. That's right. They're not canceled. They're not put on indefinite hold or anything there we're just in this pause motion where so for your labor um and i don't even know how much you know about the coordination that's gone into this i know not i just know to prepare can we talk about this yeah you could to prepare yeah (laughs) you do not prepare i want this to be completely (laughs) legit i told jeff you're not allowed to do any sit-ups you're not allowed to to work those ab muscles at all so i've been faithfully staying out of that's fantastic So with regards to the, to the labor, so I started working with a company at the start of this thing okay. um, for the electronic component. So oh, okay. they sent me um, what they created, which is an eight um, electrode um, device that goes on your stomach. Okay. Um, and that device is connected to an electronic piece. All right. That electronic piece, I'm working with Omslo. So, Uh-oh. Elaine from Omslo, those of you who follow my NEMS Linux project, uh, you're familiar with them. Um, they create Raspberry Pi accessories, P hats, um, yeah. connections, electronics for Raspberry Pis that can be controlled. So, Elaine is, well, was, I mean, a- again, everything is just on pause. All right. So know that all these things are being coordinated and, and just had to be like, okay, well, we can't proceed. So. What, what Elaine, yeah, what Elaine is working <laughs> on <laughs> is a Raspberry Pi GPIO circuit connected to a Raspberry Pi Zero uh, with the with the Wi-Fi and uh, the GPIO. Okay, that is connected to these eight electrodes, and there's a web interface for this. Oh come on! And with that web interface. Our viewers, when this happens, and it is happening, are going to be able to push the buttons. Are you serious? Yes. In real time, live. So that's all happening. 
However, I don't think that was part of the Kickstarter. That's not happening. That, well, that. we got to go LA. <laughs> we got to make this happen. Now, the other thing that we need to make sure with this, Jeff, is that you're safe. That's, of course. That's sort of important to us. <laughs> like I'm, I'm the resident guinea pig. We so. want to hurt him, but that's as far as we want it to go. <laughs> we want to safely hurt him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and with that, I actually have a volunteer organization called St. John Ambulance, uh, who we were coordinating with them. They have um, n nurses, and they were going to send two nurses that were going to oversee this entire thing. There, we have a defibrillator. We have <laughs> all of these. You laugh, but it's all for safety's sake. So all of these things are in line. <sighs> all of these things are in the works and happening. And then we went into lockdown. So St. John Ambulance comes back to me and says, okay, well, get back to us once, this is, once we're through this pandemic, because right now we cannot send the nurses. Right. Yeah. Our, our volunteers cannot enter your building. Right, okay. So that's where that's at. Hmm. So everything is happening, but paused. All right. All the perks are happening, but paused. We've, uh. got, we've got people who are going to have one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with myself, with Sasha, and it's happening, but it's paused because right. like with Sasha's schedule, she's, I, I was talking to her this week as well, she's just not sure, she can't commit because she's on call. Yeah, that's right. So it's, that makes it tough. It's and it, it, that's part. She's a PSW, so she takes care of uh, folks in a in a in a home, and and with that, she needs to be available all the time. Right. And uh, doesn't know when she's going to get called in, so she can't really commit to uh, a, you know a, a full day of yeah, being a part sense. of Category Five. So so know that. So yes, the dance is happening. Yes, we're going to shock Jeff really really badly to the point where it is indeed uh, necessary to just have a defibrillator on hand. Oh my <laughs> we also have to do the paintball thing. The paintball thing is happening, and Jeff, you suggested, well, why don't you do something with that where Sasha can remotely control that? Right, because the deal was with the paintball thing that uh, whoever donated the most, it was, what, 10 cents a ball? <laughs> whatever it so, is, we exceeded $10 it. $10 a ball, whatever <laughs> it was, to a max of 500 paintballs, and Sasha would get to shoot me. Yep. So this was the Kickstarter, and uh, that was just for anybody who donated. And then because we had that $5,000 donation come uh -huh. in, Sasha gets to shoot me with 500 balls in the name of the donor, yep. but then Sasha moved away. Yep. So I said to Robbie, there's got to be a way where Sasha can do this remotely. <laughs> so I, I have a 3D printer now. <laughs> yes, you do, and you're using and I, it so well. Yes. So what are you doing with that so that Sasha can shoot me from across the country? Well, we talked about this, and the decision was made internally that we cannot do that. Yes. And, and that's an unfortunate thing. So that, w I mean, we're, we're oh. still going to shoot him. <laughs> but we're figuring it out, and here is the solution. I, I, first of all, the reason we cannot do it is because everything that we do is to be open sourced. So okay. when we create this circuit for the, uh, the, uh, the false labor, that's going to be available on our GitHub, and people are going to be able to access that and see how it works and everything That's else. cool. We do not want to be um, a part of distributing um, a system software. a system that can connect to a weapon that can that's be fair. controlled remotely. That's fair. Right. So, because we don't want to give Sasha remote access to a paintball gun, we're going to get Sasha to come in to Studio E, and she is going to actually shoot you with oh a paintball gun. She will be here for that. So, is that happening tomorrow? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're in red zone, but it's happening and it's just on pause. 500 paintballs. I 500. So many welts. Oh my goodness. Are we going to do that the same day as the labor? No, I, no. You'll definitely need to use the defibrillator if that's the case. <laughs> I know. Oh my goodness. Oh, boy. that's nuts. Some good has come out of um, the whole situation, the pandemic, if you will. Not the pandemic itself, but right. with having um, the need to move into a new studio space, we're in a better studio. Absolutely. We're in a better space, and we're in a better place as far as the company goes uh, to grow and, and expand and move forward as a show and, and get better and better. And I think you've been finding, too, that the content has been getting, um, I guess, 
I don't know if more thorough is the word. I would say more robust. I, I wanted to take Category 5 to the next level in that when we do an unboxing, I wanted to get out of the old style of unboxing where we open a box, take it out of the box, connect it, maybe fire it up if we have time. Right. But with a one-hour show, you don't have a lot of time for that kind of stuff. That's true. So one of the things that we introduced this year is uh, production week. And yes. production week is a time when we take the week off of the live broadcast so that we can instead work behind the scenes on doing some of those extra videos. So that is like filming and unboxing that we can then speed up in post so that it only takes three minutes, five minutes out of the video, and then we can actually demonstrate the hardware. Right. So, you know, that's a really, really neat way for us to be able to do a better show for you. Mm -hmm. um, and it changes kind of the paradigm of how we shoot things. And, and that has, uh, has worked fairly well. Um, that's something that we're still evolving. And um, come January, you're going to see that um, our schedule is changing again. Um, production week is going to actually be every two weeks. So that is uh, going to be something that we're experimenting with. It may, okay. if, if it works great, then that's what we're going to do. If it doesn't, then we're going to adjust things. And we're still figuring out what it looks like to produce the new Category 5 TV. Right. It is a lot of work. It's a huge amount of work. How much work, Jeff? Two hours. Do you see the bags under my <laughs> eyes? <laughs> so production week, uh, sometimes um, viewers may think, and maybe we fall into thinking, oh, well, they're not on the air this week, so they're taking a break. No. I am. He's not. <laughs> so when that happens, I'm usually here till about midnight oh, gosh, doing yes. video production. And in fact, last night, I was still here um, producing last week's episode right. and worked until 1 o'clock in the morning getting the videos up just the the one video mind you mm -hmm. um of the interview that happened last week yes so you yeah. know all these things there's a, a lot interview. of thank you um and interview. yeah i was really excited about that and and thinking of that interview that's something that we started working on in the old studio mm -hmm. i don't know if folks realize like this is something that we have been working on for over a year yep that's true you know that Yep, because we had that server sitting there, and you know yes. that I was working on m migrating and getting everything switched over and, and filming everything, the whole process. But then we had to move, so then we had to kind of start over and get everything redone and reshot and everything else. So yeah, pretty amazing, yeah. So, But we've, we've had some good come out of this. With Sasha having to leave, um, that left a vacancy in the newsroom, and we had an interesting situation. We were um, trying to hire somebody, we did some interviews. You mm -hmm. you know this. Yep. He's, he's nodding. Yep. Yeah. No, um, I was there. So we did some interviews uh, for for somebody to help out um, on on air, and uh, we had some great prospects lined up. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic happened. So it's like the week after, I was like, "Come I on!" Know. Yeah. So so <laughs> we had. I mean, we had to put all that on hold. Yeah. And we couldn't have any new staff start with us because of the pandemic and lockdown. But my wife, Becca who you know as our news anchor now, mm -hmm. um, said that she would be willing to, to do it as a you know, temporary yep. stopgap. We don't want to cancel the news. We want to continue on with that. So she decided that she would take a go at it. For and a temporary stopgap? She's phenomenal. She's been doing a great job. And, yeah. and I think she's really found her own and, and figured totally. out that, hey, this is, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. But she's doing so well that I want to encourage her as well that, that hey, like... Uh, do you want the job? <laughs> so, right. But it's been amazing. Um, a and you need to realize, too, that having Becca as part of the news has been, um, has been what helped us to be able to carry on with that feature. That's right, because you guys are in the same home, so you don't have to worry about the social distancing. Exactly. And that kind of stuff. Yep, so she came in, and we would shoot every week. Um, so we start shooting the news at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're live at 7. So, um, and that's how it works. But because social distancing was not an issue with me and Becca, uh, it made things a lot easier, a lot safer, mm -hmm. and, uh, and legal as yes. well. So that's, right. that's always a plus. Now, let's just tell the truth. You just want to spend more time with your wife. I always want to spend more time with my wife. And, and it's funny, too, because I do all the editing right now. Right. Um, we don't have uh, another person to do editing at this point. Um, 
so I'm spending more time with my wife than she's spending with me because if I'm doing post-production, like she's on my screen and I'm doing all the editing for right. many hours. Um, and so that's been kind of a neat experience too yes. because I kind of feel like I'm spending more time with my wife, which that's has right. been cool. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, so today, I mean, just to kind of go back to the beginning of the episode, if you're just tuning in now, today we're kind of just chilling out, reminiscing about the last year as we look towards, uh, you know, kind of that holiday break. So if you are in our Discord, IRC, like, drop us a message, wish somebody Merry Christmas, or, uh, you know, give us your favorite memory, something about Cat 5 from this year, you know, let's keep it, uh, you know, happy and positive and forget about that COVID thing. And, uh, you know, just what's some good stuff that happened this year? Speaking of great content on Category 5 TV that has worked out throughout this situation, Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it's all you. (laughs) (laughs) I know where you're going with this one. Uh, Robert Koenig. Yes. With the Crypto Corner. Phenomenal. Has been doing an uh, exceptional job, and he produces this himself. Yeah. and sends it up to us. And Robert, I, I see you in our in our Discord, and you know, uh, uh, on behalf of Category Five, like we appreciate you so much. Absolutely. And uh, you know, you you folks at home who enjoy Robert's feature, um, I encourage you, like, hey, get on to LinuxTechShow.com, give him the views, give him the thumbs up, post your comments, really show some love to this guy because he's been there faithfully every single week with that content and keeping us surprised so that we Mm -hmm. know when to buy, when to sell. That's right. And (laughs) top-notch content, too. Absolutely. I've learned so much. uh, And I'm still learning so much. Like, i got to tap into this guy's knowledge. I agree. For sure. Yeah, totally agree. So that's really worked out well. But please, yes, give him the thumbs up. We have this interesting situation where we're, we're trying to figure out our YouTube as well. Yes. And if you subscribe to us on YouTube, you see that, like, we're constantly evolving the content and trying to figure out... Uh, what, what's the best way to release this content? And, and by doing that, we're trying to figure out, you know, it's tough because Robert's a part of Linux Tech Show. Right. But then all of a sudden we're doing a review of a Raspberry Pi. So I think from a viewer's perspective, it's like, well, is this, is this channel about cryptocurrency? Or is it about right. single board computers? Or, but we're all a team working together just trying to bring you exceptional um, tech centric content yeah and uh, and robert's a big part of that so so get on there and don't just pay attention to the the raspberry pi stuff give him a thumbs up as well uh okay bp9 says you guys moved into a smaller studio how is the new space working out for you i guess let's let's ask jeff that question first because my perspective is going to be very very different as kind of the manager of the whole thing right i i think uh, the two studios can't be compared. They're not apples to apples mm-hmm. because they're different. Like this is the first studio we've had. A that, fireplace. Well, yeah, fireplace. But this is the first studio where we've had dual rooms. Like all the other studios. Tri-shiary rooms. Well, that's true. Yeah, there's yes. three rooms. So our other studio was all one room. It was a big open area. This studio is totally different. Like the fact that we're in an isolated room that's just for filming you know, you've got the the lighting rigs, the boom mic, mm-hmm. or the boom camera, all the kind of stuff, and it's separate from the server. It changes the dynamic because mm-hmm. the, uh, the, the, the that background white noise of the server running is different. Mm-hmm. You can have your production studio. So on that end, absolutely love it. I do feel like it's a little bit more work for you going back and forth. Like, <laughs> yeah. like with Studio D, you could sit right there. Yes. And, oh, let's do a mic check. Let's yeah. do an audio check. Oh, something's wrong. Okay. Do, do. And you could do it while almost still being on camera. Here, it's mm-hmm. like, okay, hold on. I got to walk around there. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more steps for you, which I think works because, you know, you can't your steps. <laughs> the closest thing I get to a workout. That's right. Yeah. Um, but personally, I, I love this studio. I think there's so much potential in it that uh, will make Cat5 a much better, more well-rounded product. It is smaller. I do wish that there was more space just because we've got so much stuff packed into here. Yeah. Because gear. Yeah. Not like just junk. Like between like gear. Well yeah, like lots of cameras, a lots lot of lights. It goes into making a show like mm-hmm. this. It's not just a single DSLR and a computer. Like mm-hmm. there's a ton of work that goes into this. Mm-hmm. And I mean even move day, like we had to rent a pretty decent sized truck just mm-hmm. to move the studio. Yeah. Um, so I mean I love the studio. I'm excited about it. I love the cool little things you're doing 
that the other studios you couldn't do. Like, you know, you walk in, you've got your 3D printer. Yeah. And you've got that rig set up where it's filming it and all that. We've got the, the cables run through the wall that Ameridroid hooked us up with that wall. The easy um, portal, yeah. Yeah, the easy portal. Like, all these little things that we would never have done in an open-air studio mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, how can we evolve this and make it better? It just yeah. it's it's so cool because we've had to change the dynamics of what we do and how we do it, and it just takes it to that different level. I love it. Yeah, and this is the first time we've pulled down the green screen, but That's it seems true. to be working really well. Yep. And so we actually have like a proper um, system where we can pull down different colored drapes and things like that. That's pretty neat. Yep. Um, the space for me is brilliant, and you mentioned the sound in here. Like if we're quiet, mm-hmm. what do you hear, Jeff? Nothing. It is absolutely silent because. We actually have a policy here that there are no moving parts allowed in the studio. So that means no fans, no um, computers that have moving parts. You so and I every, are the only things that move. Everything is solid state, so it's absolutely silent in here. If there's anything that has a moving part, like the 3D printer, it's in a different room. Right. So And that isolates all the sounds. So sound is uh, completely different uh, yeah. here than it was at the old place. Very different. Um, and I love the space. I love having um, the production room separate from the TV studio. Yes. Here, because I'm, when I, I'm on the air for Tech TV, um, it's a little different because I am also the producer. Yes. So there's nobody in the producer's room right now. Right. And when Jeff says I'm getting my steps, it's because I have to actually walk in there, push a couple buttons, and then come back if we need to change yeah. To, to a different shot or, or something like that. Uh, we do use a, a stream deck in order to change camera shots, but I mean, like when we're switching between the news and things, we want to be able to hear it, so I go in there and turn on the speakers. Yep. Um, but when, uh, when the pandemic was at its peak here in Barrie, uh, before the churches were allowed to open, my church actually used this space mm-hmm. in order to do their, their church broadcasts, and your church used it a couple times as well. Yes, yeah, that's right. So... From that perspective, in that environment, they were in here doing their thing. I was not even in the room. I was yeah. in the other room running the, the board, making sure the audio was good, making sure the stream was live, and completely separate. So yeah. social, iso- social isolation, if you will, was brilliant. Yeah. It was really, really a lot easier for us uh, in this space. And it's a wonderful space. Oh, totally. Absolutely. I also, the one other thing that I love is because you have your own separate production studio, mm-hmm. you can have all those monitors. <laughs> you couldn't at Studio D because you Be were blocking right the there view. just at the edge of the camera. So you yeah. had like your, I think you just had two monitors, and now you've got like six. It's amazing. Like I, I walk into the production studio every time, and I get just a little bit jealous. <laughs> Not going to lie. BP9's question, going back to that, asking about having a smaller space, I should just say the space appears smaller because it is three rooms. Right. So it's it's almost the same amount of space that we used to have in one big open room, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, but it's split into three rooms. Right. So it, it, the studio space is smaller than our old studio space because there's also a production space. Yeah. So do keep that in mind. But the space itself, our floor space, is only, I think, 10 square feet smaller. Yeah, it's it's really minimal as okay. far as that goes. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing here, and this sort of segues into Nomen 5's question as well, which we'll touch on. Um, the neat thing here is that we're in a mall. Yes. And in a mall, if the company grows... And if we say, okay, we have outgrown this small studio space, we can actually, there's another unit right on the other side of this wall. Mm -hmm. We can rent that unit. We can take out one of the walls, put in a door, and expand. Because it's, that's what they do. They sell square footage. That's right. When we signed up for this place, they put up everything and painted and got it set up for us. Like, this is set up for us. That's right. So we we can expand. We can grow. We can do that. And Nomen5 asks, well, I hope that you don't lose your heat or your air conditioner like you did at Studio D. Nope. So Studio D, our previous space, was an industrial unit um, who they worked there during the day, and then we would come in the evening and do our show. Um, We had our own separate space with locked doors, and it was completely separate from the business, um, but there was nobody else in the building. Yeah. So if we tripped a breaker, 
which I've done once here. <laughs> I, uh, I turned on the vacuum, I plugged it into the wrong outlet and tripped a breaker. If we did that at the old studio space, we would have no power. That's right. And we would have to wait till the next morning when someone came in in order to get power back. We did have problems with heat and mm -hmm. we did have mm -hmm. problems with AC because again, it's a unit within a giant building That's and right. if somebody was c cold that day and cranked the heat in their unit, they didn't realize that now our unit was a sauna. Yeah. And there were some warm they would go warm home. Episodes. Yeah, and they would go home and the heat the the big blowers in the ceiling were just pumping out heat all night yeah, long while loud. we were Yeah, they were loud. There was that too. <laughs> But this was the problem, right? We didn't have our own thermostat. There was nothing yeah. like that. And we don't hear either, but there, it's climate controlled. Yep. I mentioned I tripped the breaker. When I tripped the breaker, I walked to the mall office and I said, hi, I tripped a breaker. And they said, oh, no problem. We'll be right there. They came, they went into the electrical room, uh, which is not in our unit, yep. and flipped the breaker back for us. Which is awesome. Done. Problem solved. If the heat ever stopped working, if the AC ever stopped working here, it's a big professionally managed building and I am fully confident that they will not allow it to be, uh, like if the climate control was down, it's yep. down for everyone. Yep. So it, it just wouldn't happen here. It yep. can't happen. It's true. Yeah, exactly. Professionally managed space. What a difference that makes. Yeah. It's nice. This is Category 5 TV. We're wrapping up the year 2020. We're saying farewell to the old and in with the new. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the new. Yes. Hello <laughs> to our Discord. Uh, hello to our IRC. Please jump in. Say hello if you've got questions for Jeff or I. Uh, or Jeff or me, I should say. I, I always go back to when Eric was a co-host. He always corrected me on that one. Now, now I get it right most times. It's Eric was the worst for that. It's always correct. It's so-and-so and I. A in school, that's how I learned it. Yeah. It was always and I. But no, it's not always that way. When do you use me? Um, it depends on the context and, and how you would say it if it was just you. So Really? Yeah. Huh. So if I would say I am sitting here, then it's Jeff and I. Versus like... Hand that to me, so hand that to Jeff and me. Yes, exactly. Good example. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Well, you learn something new huh. every Christmas episode. Wow. <laughs> no tech here today, folks. <laughs> well, speaking of tech, we do have our phones out. We're not being antisocial. Uh, we're actually in Watching Discord the chat. talking to all of our wonderful fans and viewers and the community. So if you are not part of our Discord, you need to get involved. So go to Cat5. Absolutely. All the information's there. Uh, the great thing about Discord, I mean... I love the IRC, but the IRC is one channel. With mm. Discord, what I love is that there are so many channels. Like I look down, there's got to be 30 channels within this Discord server that's always hopping. There's always something new popping up. You've got the general chat that just never seems to end because we've got viewers from all over the, the globe. But if you've got a tech issue, you can post questions all week <laughs> long. If, you, if you've got recipes, we've got food channels in there. If you want to post pictures of bacon. That's right. There's a, a channel, channel. There's a channel dedicated to that. Um, I love bacon. And for the vegans, there is a channel for you too. That's right. Yeah. I may or may not throw meat pictures in there just because. Oh, Jeff, you didn't. I, I, I think I did once. Oh, yeah. Jeff. I, I, I Banned. Love, I love my meat. What can I say? <laughs> there's a reason I like the bacon channel. Oh, dear. <laughs> But yeah, and even behind the scenes stuff, like we've got, I mean, when the show's not happening, there's so much going on, so you can get in there. Yeah, but, we post uh, pictures all the time. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, so if you're in the Discord, by all means, say hi, throw out a Christmas greeting, let us know kind of what your highlights have been for 2020. So mm -hmm. uh, is there any sneak peeks or sneak like uh, teasers on what's coming in 2021? What is coming in 2021 now? Yes, the, I mean, you want teasers? I want teasers. <laughs> well, I mentioned that part of the idea behind Production Week is to be able to do proper unboxings, proper testing, yep. um, and, and sometimes that means weeks of testing. Sometimes that means having a product here set up and we've been using it. Like the 3D printer is a perfect example. Yes. Well, how did we review that? Well, the unboxing took 
a long time because yep. it had to be assembled. So we put that all together for you, and then I learned how to use the 3D printer, at least at a rudimentary, rudimentary. Yeah, no, now I just, uh, it's a You're constant production run. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so with the 3D printer, like, so production week makes it so that we can do much bigger features. So we're doing things like uh, we have uh, an open source NAS unit that's single board computer powered. And I've wanted to do this for some time. You remember I actually started a series where I was going to make one from uh, an Odroid XU4. Mm -hmm. And that's still coming as well. But that's a perfect example of uh, a feature that we really wanted to do. But because we were limited to just one hour per show and we were shooting everything live, no B-roll, no like pre-production or anything like that. It made it impossible for us yeah. to get through those types of series. So now we've already shot the unboxing and assembly of this open source NAS unit. We've done some testing. I have a couple more weeks that I'm going to be testing it and, and setting it up and installing software and putting it through all the paces. And then we're going to be demonstrating that here on the show, which is going to be amazing because you're mm -hmm. going to get all of the benefit of many, many weeks, uh, even so much as probably about a month and a half worth of testing, oh my all compiled into one single wow. feature. So that's exciting. Looking at the 3D printer, um, one of the things that folks have been really um, intrigued by are some of these, what I call a hyperlapse. It's not quite a time lapse. A time lapse, I picture like stick figures moving back and forth. Right. But most, most people um, call it a time lapse, but it's a hyperlapse, which is um, where you see the thing growing out of the 3D printer, and it yeah. just grows. And you showed that two weeks ago, I think, on the show? We use it all the time, ever since I got the 3D printer yeah, and, and created it. Build? Oh, it was when you showed the... Uh, the Christmas ornament that you put yeah. things in. Bose Christmas ornament yeah. at Ameridroid. Yeah. yeah, if you haven't seen that, linuxtechshow.com. Click onto the, the uh, uh, there's a playlist for 3D printing hyperlapses. Um, that was cool, but also uh, even in the interview with, uh, with Mark last week. That's right, I yeah. 3D printed some parts for the server in order to allow those drives to connect directly to the backplane, mm -hmm. and you saw the, the pieces just kind of growing out yes. of the build plate. And so we're going to be demonstrating how I do that. Which is so amazing. And again, going back to, I, I don't want to just show you, I want you to be able to do it yourself. So we're releasing all of the source code, the designs, we're creating videos to show you how to do it yourself. Because what I did is I 3D printed and soldered a switch that mm -hmm. connects to my 3D printer and then wrote a Perl, uh, no, pardon me, a Python application that in, injects code into my G code um, that tells the extruder that in between each layer, as soon as you finish printing a layer, I want you to go push that button. And so this is all programmatic. And, and so this whole thing is open source and available to our viewers. Uh, and, uh, and that's something that I'm looking forward to doing as well. So we're going to be demonstrating how to actually do those hyperlapse videos, which is just a that's lot of fun. That's exciting. It's a lot of fun. And I can't wait to see what our viewers come up with as well. So cool. I, I love the evolution of the show in the fact that, you know, you go back to the beginning of Cat5, uh, what, 14 years ago. And, like, you had that um, fundraising software that you made. Shareathon Share Express. The Shareathon Express. Yep. You know, and it's like that was the big thing thing yep. and and then uh when i came on what five six years ago like 3d printing was still coming around but at that time it was all about drones yep and like as the show evolves and as tech changes it also kind of drives the dynamics of the show mm -hmm. and then we had this push of cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and and now we're <laughs> we're like maker projects and i love that i love how the show keeps evolving mm -hmm. with tech as it evolves and it's like five years from now when this is like a full blown thing and like we're we're filming 180 hours a day, what is the tech that we're going to be covering? Are we going to be covering like yeah, yeah. you know nano? Oh yes, bots everything, <laughs> everything, Jeff. <laughs> it's going to be cool. that, that is you know it's the fun thing about working at a place like Category Five is that there is always a, a, an assortment of content available. It's really just what do we have time to produce? Yes. And that's as the company grows, that's where we want to be. We want to be able to produce more and more ex excellent content. And so, you know, your support of Category 5 throughout this year and moving forward through Patreon is just a way that um, you're helping us to grow, mm -hmm. helping us to stay strong, and helping us to get better and better. Uh, Noman 5 is um, looking at our, our discussion about 3D printing and saying yep. he's actually 
um, 3D printing a bunch of stuff for stocking stuffers right now. It's a great idea. I've been doing the same thing. Yep. And it's, it is really cool. I'm at the point now where I'm designing my own stocking stuffers. Which is so cool. Yeah. You've seen some of it. I, unfortunately, I, I can't show you yet. This is one of the things I can't show you because my kids might see it. That's right. <laughs> but there is some really cool stuff coming off the printer. Um, and I've been saving money <laughs> on things that I would normally have to buy. Yep. But uh, And some things you can't even buy because they don't exist. That's right. Which is even cooler. It's mm -hmm. funny. I, I, every week I say to Jen, I'm like, I want a 3D printer. I have no legitimate use for it, but I want a 3D printer. And every week I come home and I'm like, Robbie did this. Robbie oh, made yeah. that. I'm like, this is so cool. And she's like, Robbie has a use for that. <laughs> and I'm like, but I could do. Yeah, but some of these <laughs> some of these stocking stuffers, oh, and, and, and I do save money too. Like I'll just oh, say, yeah. um, one of the things that I 3D printed for one of my children uh, was $40 on Amazon. Right. And it cost me 60 cents to make myself. Well, look at the the rack for the servers. Yeah. Uh, or for the yeah, hard drive. Another example, yeah. Like, I mean, that last week, you saved yourself half the price of the 3D printer exactly. alone. Exactly, yeah. Like, that's yep. phenomenal. And I needed them. I yeah. needed them. And now it's like if someone else wants them, I know, hey, I can print you some of those. Yep. Yep. So, I mean. $10 the, each. The fact that, you know, like. <laughs> Why our, not? Why our, not? Our, exactly. But yeah. the fact that Luke, uh, our middle child, is getting into soldering and all yep. that. And he wants to get into maker projects. It's like, I could totally pair soldering with a, with a 3D printer. And he could do some really cool stuff. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm making cases for my single board computers. Yep. And starting to do some really cool designs. Nem Nems Linux is a tool that I've written that uh, monitors your network and gives you the state information. So if a if a hard drive is failing, it will warn you. Mm -hmm. um, so the case is actually kind of neat. It has RGB LEDs in it. Oh, cool. And the case will light up based on the state of your network. So if something oh. is wrong, the light will turn red. Very cool. And that's all part of the case that I designed. That's neat. It is I like neat. that. Um, Ameridroid wants to remind you that uh, you can let your wife know <laughs> that the 3D printer is not for you. It's for the education. It's the education of the children. You know what, Ameridroid? You are absolutely correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My kids love it. And, and even so much as just printing a Dalek. Oh, yeah. You know, just to have that figurine. And it's as good as something that you get in the store. Yep. And it costs 10 cents to print. <laughs> well, like, okay, so going back to Luke, because he's, he's our creative kid. Yeah. Every time we buy a game, like it could be Clue, it could be Monopoly, it could be Settlers of Catan, whatever. <laughs> he, like, we're done, and he's like, oh, I'm kind of bored with that game. I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, can I make a game with that? Like, what do you mean make a game? And he'll literally take an existing game, mm -hmm. come up with a whole new set really? of rules, and, and develop his own game using the board and oh, pieces. Neat. And I've said to Jen... Imagine many, if he could 3D print his own pieces. That's what I've said to Jen yeah. many times. I'm like, what if Luke could make his own game? Like, yeah. he, lo he makes his own comic. I mean, this kid's 12, 11, 12, somewhere around there. <laughs> uh, but, like, he, he makes Who's his he own... Who's he asking? <laughs> I know. He makes his own comic books. He solders. He wants to get into programming 3D printing. He comes up mm -hmm. with games. I'm like, you know what? You just keep coming up with stuff because later in life, when I'm retired at 50, because you're paying for everything because you're a genius... Then uh, it'll all pay off. <laughs> That's it too. Is you want to encourage creativity? Yeah, for sure. And I'm always looking for. I guess you'd say I'm looking for ways to encourage that creativity in my kids. And you know, I've done the the Raspberry Pis, and they assemble it, and then they don't know what to do with it. Right. And and I try to find projects. It's like, okay, well, now you can program stuff, and it's like, well, but I can program on the computer, and it's faster. And so it's like, okay, well, I tried with that. So, yeah. But the 3D printer is something that, yeah, I'm finding that the kids really do enjoy it. They're, yeah. they're coming up with some neat ideas. It's here at the studio, so they, you know, they have to now come in to the studio in order to 3D print something. Right. But you can get one at home or Absolutely. put one in the garage or whatever else. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I'm trying to watch the Discord here as well, folks. Hey, if you got a, a memory or some, some question for us, uh, anything about Category 5 TV over the past year, we'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, what's on your Christmas list? My Christmas list actually consists of a lot of accessories for the 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> because I have to keep myself creative, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I find that it's, it's a hobby for me, that it's, it's become a hobby for me to be able to tinker and play around. Mm -hmm. And I'm at that point now where I am doing my own designs. And so it's like, 
I'd really like a nice metallic filament and you know these right. kinds of things. I'd like to be able to do more with the 3D printer. I uh, like that you're getting into the dual color printing. I like, am. Programming that is so neat to watch. Well, the, the Ender 3 V2 has only a single extruder. So that means that you can only have one color filament coming out of the extruder right. at any one time. But you can change the filament mid-print. Mm -hmm. So I tried that. That was my first step. So I printed uh, an ornament, yes. just a plain red ornament. And then I printed on top of that. So I, in, in Cura, I then took text and turned it into a 3D print. And I elevated it five layers, which was the height of the ornament, and actually printed directly onto the ornament with white text. Right. So I've got a red ornament with white text on it, and it worked perfectly. Yeah, it looked great. Yeah. So then I took it one step further, and I took my text, and I turned it into a hole, they call it. So basically, it's an, an inverse of something that you would print. It, it is anti-print. Right. So okay. I took the thing that I was printing, and I pushed the text down into it, Okay. So that it would create a hole in the first print. So then when I printed the red thing, there's a hole. And then I switched the filament and I put it inside of the hole. So I put my 3D oh, so print inside the hole. So then I printed the white into the hole. Ah, okay. And so it's perfectly flush. That's how you did it. That yeah. was very cool. But, but it looks like a multicolor print. Yeah, it does. But really, I'm just changing the filament and programming the G-code in such a way that it, that it actually prints in the right spot. That's so cool. Make sure you line things up just perfectly, kids. I love that. <laughs> so good. Uh, so BP9 wants to know about learning uh, Lua on mind test. For, for Luke? Uh, Might be fun. Lua is a programming language. Oh, okay. And gotcha. mind test is a Minecraft-like yes. game. Yes, yeah. yeah. T um, t um, Mango Fox used to do some mind test mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. Yeah. And so I do remember that. We had a program uh, here on Category 5, the Pixel Shadow. Yes. Which she did when called. she was younger. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yep. mind test is a really, <laughs> really great version, like an open source version of what you would say is like a clone of Minecraft. It's yep. not really a clone of Minecraft. They come from the same base, but... Um, but they're very, very similar. Yep. But with Lua, you could be programming your own modules for it, creating okay. very, very customized um, worlds. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I'll have to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. I know Luke plays Mind Test sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we we should do like a Mind Test LAN party. Oh, my goodness. There's That'd so be a many lot LAN of parties we need to do. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Are you in? <laughs> All right, folks. Well, it has been fantastic having you here, Jeff. What is what is on the horizon for you as far as like what do you look forward to with Category Five? So we're coming up on 2021. We're yeah. we know that it's going to be better than 2020. What's on the horizon? Honestly, for me, I want to expand my um, knowledge base to the point where it's not on all on your shoulders. Mm, That's my I true like the desire. way this is going, yeah. Uh, like, I watch you do the features, and I mean, I, I love being here, I love being co-host, I love just being a mouthpiece that can add banter. But I don't have a lot of time in my life to learn these things, because mm -hmm. my job doesn't go into the realm of tech mm -hmm. that often. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's starting to now, but I want to be able to know some things where it's like, hey, Robbie, I can do the feature this week. And right. you're like, hey, this is great. I'm going to sit in the production studio and produce things. That's what I'm hoping to do. Uh, it's just, it's a matter of time. That's cool. So yeah, Henry Bailey Brown really hit on that. Yes. When he brought in his feature, which was um, the 3D. when he 3D scans yeah. using his drone. So he shot all that and brought it into the studio, ready yep. to go. And then we sat down and, and kind of added the bumpers on either end and talked about what it was we were seeing. Right. But that was all something that he brought in, and right. that, that's really, really cool. And so, yeah, well, and that that's why I'm neat. working on uh, the circuit boards with Luke. Yeah. So that we, you know, we can go down that road, mm -hmm. get you some B-roll, and then we could <laughs> build this circuit board. It's, uh, you know, so it's things like that where it's yeah. like, that's what I would love oh, to do. Oh, I'd love to see that stuff, you too. And, and I looked up, when you were talking about creating your own PCBs, and you mentioned using a laser printer. And so I'm like, what are you talking about? So I actually looked into this. And it's a way to like use the ink from a laser printer to actually like dissolve parts of the PCB yeah. so that it actually creates yeah. the circuit. It's so neat. How does that even work? I don't know. And 
<laughs> but <For> magic. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I didn't want to. Seems like magic. I didn't want to look into the chemistry of it because I'm like, yeah. I just don't want to. Like, this is cool enough, but advanced enough as it is. Yeah. But when you print the design on the paper, and then and it has to be laser. It can't be color. And then when you put it on the board, and then there's the chemicals that you use that are just the chemicals you it, get at the it store. It interacts with the ink. Yeah, and then it creates the actual so weird. conduit that the electrical signal passes on. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a matter of drilling the holes, and then you put your various components in and solder them. And so, so neat. it's a way to make circuit boards at home without having the professional circuit board printers because yeah. you can just design it on, I, th what, I think it's KCAD is the program I've got. Okay. Um, where you can design your circuit board, sure. and you know each of the you know the little modules and components that go in it that you solder. It's like okay, well this resistor's here, and this is going to mm -hmm. go there. Yeah, and then you just print it off on paper and do it. And so it's it's pretty pretty neat. Yeah, it's impressive, and and blew my mind when I came across it. I think the search term in in your search engine is going to be um, PCB laser printer method. Yep. And yeah. if you do a search for that, your mind might be blown too. Has yeah. anyone in our community ever done that before? I'd be interested to know. And I think Jeff would probably be interested to yeah, know as absolutely. well. We'd love to see pictures. Yeah. So yeah, that's for me, that's what I would love to do for Cat5. It's just a matter of the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So, But I'm slowly learning. Cool. You know. Community joining us in our Discord on IRC um, real quick, and, and you don't have much time. Is there something that you're looking forward to with 2021 uh, and how Category 5 is a part of uh, your life during that time. I think for me, it's, it's going to be really cool to see how the show evolves post-pandemic. Yeah. Because right now, we've been working so hard to pull everything off amidst the constant threat of lockdown, the occasional lockdown. Yep. Um, right now, red zone and not being able to have people into our studio, uh, including um, the lighting installers. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that were supposed to be installing our new LED lighting panels have had to cancel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, I'm looking forward to seeing what the show can do in 2021 when these types of things are not a consideration, or at least not, uh, not holding us back yeah in a way so that's that's something i'm really looking forward to i love the way that, that you know the community is going and and the way everybody supports us it's so great to have uh, you know you guys are a part of this yep solbu saying he would love to see sasha do something on the show even if it's a little yeah. bit pre-recorded and i mean that's totally the plan i mean as robbie mentioned earlier mm -hmm. it's just a matter of her schedule and getting her available and, and finding times at work and, and i mean I, I pre-recorded probably would make it easier but uh you know with her being, being out in the iceberg capital of canada <laughs> it's uh it's a matter of with you know, poor internet well yeah it's, it's a matter of internet <laughs> it's gonna be tough as well so we're gonna figure you know, out that ways make it tough but yeah. uh yeah it's uh it's good it's gonna be good Norman five would like to actually come and visit us post pandemic uh, and be in the studio and I think that would be really great too we've never yeah. uh, obviously we've not been able to have any guests here physically in the studio yet that's right and that's going to be really really cool this space I mean um, Boliknowski and and Bill Marshall have been to our studio space some of our community um, have been to our studio space in Studio D mm -hmm. um, to to be a part of the show we've had others as well yep. and um, that place was, you know, we made the most of it. We made yeah. a great space for what it was, but those who were there know that it was just a big open room with horrible floors and an industrial bathroom. Yes, and it was. Some heat that you couldn't turn off. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's but true. now it's like, okay, I'm going to be proud to have you come and join us here. So I yeah. hope that those who have already been up to join us. Yeah, Bo from Ameridroid wants to come and see us as well. I'd love to He's give you He's got to bring the up the Ameribus. <laughs> Can you imagine the gas? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I want to see gas. the Maribus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we'd love to. We'd love to have you uh, come to the studio and join us. Um, I'm thinking in my head. Uh, one of the things I do want to do in the new year, when it's possible, is to host um, uh, tours. Oh, that'd Just be fun. A tour yes. to have people in. Right now, I've considered, like, do we do it during this time? And everybody just wears a mask, and we allow two people in at a time. And 
have to redundantly explain everything over and over and over again for a day. I thought maybe that would work. But I think maybe if we just wait things out and then come in and, and have like an open house, which is what we had originally planned yeah. when we first started thinking about moving. We, we had October something was our open house that had to get canceled. Yeah. Um, so that would be uh, that would be really cool. And then I thought about shooting a 360 video for those of you who can't travel to Canada. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, so that you could have a virtual tour as well. So if that's something that you would like, a 360 video, that will cost us some money. Um, so become a patron. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's been a long time since we've done a 360. Yes. The yeah. last one was... Uh, was oh, man. Episode 4. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's when I we had remember. all the past co-hosts in. Yeah. It was that was fun. Yeah. But a good. huge amount of production. Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. So much. So, you know, we, we really need to have, we'd need to step up our equipment a little bit as far as the 360 video goes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is there, okay, so I know we've got to shut it down because we're kind of hit at the point, but is there anything we haven't done with the show that's always been on your dream list that you'd love to do with Cat5? That's a big question to spring on me, Jeff. I don't think so. I'm sure there are. As soon yeah. as we sign off the air, I'll think of something and I'll post it in our behind the scenes or something. <laughs> There's one thing I've always wanted to do with Cat5 and What's I that? don't know if we'll be able to do it just right. because I we think are it's not levitating using ions. I would love for us to be able to get on the s on studio oh. behind the scenes. Yes for Star Trek Discovery. That would be neat. It's filmed an hour away from us. Yeah. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. So if any of y'all watching, or, ooh, the Orville, that would be fun. Do a trip oh, to yeah. California. Oh, yeah, let's, let's go down to California. Bo, you want to put us up for a week? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> see, that would be neat. Yeah. Like, I would love to see Cat 5 go, like, and, and hang out behind studios with that kind of stuff. Could we ever do that? Yeah, I, so I, you ask it's if totally there's anything. It's totally doable. Well, it's not. What? Because, and you say, like, do you dream, Robbie? Yeah, I dream. But Category 5 is a part-time gig for me. Uh, yes. Part-time. I work my butt <laughs> off. Fair it's enough. a lot of work. But to do something like traveling and things like that, that means, like, this would have to be a full-time job. You know, I will travel on your behalf. Oh, thanks, yeah, Jeff. I'll, you know what? You, you can know stay what? Here. I, I would <laughs> really like to have this as a full-time job. This is a great place to work. Yeah. So can we just like work toward that, and maybe Robbie be able to do some traveling? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've always wanted to see Cat Five do that because then it'd that be would like, be neat. Yeah. That's just cool. the closest we ever came was to send uh, Henry Bailey Brown down to. Um, uh, he went to. I think it was in Toronto for the VRTO. Yeah, oh, that's right. Virtual yeah. Reality Toronto. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, he went down there and again shot B-roll, put yep. it all together for us. That was pretty cool. That would be so, cool. Yeah, yeah. So Good I'll times. I'll hook you up with tickets to the next one. Woo! Haha. -ha. If things like that happen anymore, <laughs> well, not right now. Like we were looking at CES. Well. Yeah. What are we going to do with CES this year? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we can go virtually there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, well. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Yeah. That's good. All right, folks. Well, it's been great having you here. And, and I'm not just saying that to the chat, but those of you who are watching as well, uh, thank you for a wonderful year. It's been a roller coaster ride for all of us mm -hmm. um, here at the studio. It, there have been good weeks and bad weeks, and it's been a, a real roller coaster of like not really knowing what is going on sometimes. But we're here, we're faithfully putting together shows, and we're going to continue doing so. Really excited about what's to come in January. So watch our website, category5.tv. Scroll down on the homepage, you'll see a Google Calendar embedded there. That's going to give you the up-to-date calendar as far as what our production schedule looks like. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to be off for Christmas break over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so Jeff's got time off. I actually will have time off. That's so nice for you. it's not production week. It, there will be family time and, and actually taking a break. Um, I didn't really get the vacation that I normally would take this year. Yeah. Um, because what do, what do you do for vacation? So I, <laughs> I, but I was looking at my vacation days that are left over. It's we're here at the end of the year. All my vacation days have stored up because I didn't use them. So. Right. So I'm going to take some time off at Christmas and Good. just take a break. With you deserve it. With my immediate family, because we're in red zone. That's we, right. We yeah. can't visit our parents or anything. So yeah. 
Um, so it's, you know, there's, there's good and bad. But um, so we will be back in January, second week of January, and uh, really looking forward to having you here. First week of January is production week. That's right. So we'll be here as well, but uh, just yeah. won't be on the air. If you're a Kickstarter supporter or a patron, just know that over the next couple of weeks, even though we will be off the air, you will be receiving content. This is something I should really quickly touch on because I want our Kickstarter supporters and patrons to know that even though the vlog has fallen behind, I'm going to explain that a little bit, um, there are some vlogs coming over the next couple of weeks. Awesome. With the way the production has been going, we have one production rig. Right. And so there have been two attempts to produce a vlog. First one was the LED lighting install, mm -hmm. which they didn't show up and canceled. So, you know, I produced the, f <laughs> the first part of the vlog and then it's like, oh, is, it's not happening. So, uh, and the second one um, got everything together, and the production rig is in use, producing the um, the um, interview that you saw right, last, last week. week. Yeah. So, so with having one production rig, it's it's posing a problem where I can't do additional content because right. that rig is constantly putting out video or editing video. Any moment that I have. I'm not looking for extra things to do. Right. And so I'm having that little bit of difficulty where I, and I don't have a, a, another editor who can put these together for me. It has to be me right now. So there's just not enough time in the week. Yeah. So, um, so during this downtime, it gives me an opportunity to vlog. I'm going to be coming on and talking with you, having some nice um, conversations about what's been going on. I'm going to show you some of the things that you haven't seen yet, mm -hmm. but you have to be a Kickstarter supporter or a patron in order to uh, to see those uh, bits of content. So, looking forward to to sharing those with you over the next few weeks. Go, go, go. All right, folks. We'll have a wonderful Christmas, a happy New Year. 2021 is going to be better than 2020, I promise. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully, it doesn't take long before things shift in the right direction, and we have uh, you know see some light at the end of this thing. So. Uh, but thank you for supporting us and being a part of this community throughout the course of 2020. It's been up and down, but you've always seen us through. So thank you. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Take care, Jeff. You too. See Merry you. Merry Christmas. Bye.